Hi, welcome to the Interaxis YouTube channel and Interaxis.io. Today, and for, for a whole week, we're really going to talk about tokenized real-world assets and the idea of taking some real-world assets and actually tokenizing them, putting them on, uh, I don't want to say the blockchain, on a blockchain. Why it's so important, who the players are, uh, and, and some of these uh, aspects. So a few years ago, it became really popular and, and it was really trending to talk about STO, security token offerings, real world assets on chain. There was some real estate that, that uh, was being looked to put on chain. And that some of that hype some of that hype cycle was capitalizing on the ICO hype and the ICO bubble, the, the initial coin offerings. And so now people were saying, okay, I can take my real estate asset or I can take a private company or something and put it on chain, usually on Ethereum using ERC tokens. And all of a sudden I can uh, find investors and they will want to invest because I'm calling it a token. What they were missing was, one, was it even a good investment? Um, what, what did it mean to tokenize an investment? Why would you even do it? Was there a market for it? Why was it important? All those things that now we want to talk about it, and now kind of the pipes, the plumbing, the infrastructure has been built to facilitate quite a bit of that. So what do we mean when we say tokenizing real world assets? This is where uh, we start using the utilizing the blockchain, the plumbing of the blockchain, the infrastructure of it, and some of the uh, characteristics to take real-world assets and and um, transfer provenance or move ownership or move other uh, denotions of that asset on chain. What do we mean by that? And we've talked about it several times in several of our videos, but we want to discuss that here. So let let's take say a uh, real estate investment because real estate has been the uh, the the biggest use case I think so far in terms of tokenizing real world assets. Uh, and real estate, some of the problems with it is it's highly illiquid. Okay, that means if I want to invest in this particular office building right now, uh, I, I can put my money in and maybe I get some sort of distributions or dividends based on the rent that is collected minus the expenses that are paid for things like uh, a, a loan on the property, for paying for the upkeep, for paying for the air conditioning, for paying for the staff. Uh, to manage it and everything else, hopefully at the end of the day there's some profit left over and it gets distributed to me as the investor. However, in the, in the meantime, in, in the months or years or whatever it might be that I'm holding that investment and that the group, the investment group is holding that investment, it is illiquid. I can't get to the cash that I initially put in, right? So if I put in, let's, let's call it $100,000 into this investment, now I might get, uh, we'll call it uh, $8,000 a year in terms of a distribution, which is great. That, you know, 8% return is, is pretty good on my money, right? But in the meantime, I don't necessarily have access to this $100,000. And the reason is because it's illiquid. It's been baked into the contract, into the, um, into the LLC documents that I signed that I can't go just transfer ownership or any piece of my ownership. Part of the reason is because if I go transfer my ownership, then the management company or the developer that, that bought this and put this investment group together would have to value it, they'd have to, tr they'd, they'd have to repaper, they'd have to make sure that person that's buying in is an accredited investor. They would have to then sign all the paperwork. They would have to then get the distributions of, of my uh, dividends it would now go to them. And it's a pain, it costs them a lot of time, it costs them a lot of money, they don't want to do it, so they just tell me when I buy and look. You have two choices if you want to get out. You either wait till we sell the building, in which case there's a liquidity event and you'll get your money back, plus you know whatever gain there has been on your shares. Or if you really need to get out, you can redeem your shares to the company and we will we'll buy it back from you, but probably at a reduced rate because it's a pain because we don't have to keep the, we don't want to have to keep the cash on hand to redeem it. And by the way, there might be a limit, so we can't have everyone redeeming all at once. So that's part of the problem with real estate is that it's illiquid. Um, and, and look, 8% looks really good now, but what if interest rates jump up and all of a sudden I can go somewhere else and get a 10 or 14 or 15% return on my money? I'd want to do that. And here I am stuck earning uh, a measly 8%, right? So uh, I have some interest rate risk as well because it's a long-term asset that, that I'm, I'm locking up. So 
assets like this, it, it's in, in real estate is the second largest asset class in the world behind only debt. So if you can take real estate and you can take debt instruments and put those on chain uh, and take all that paperwork and all the the data that goes into those particular assets and put them on chain, now you have something, right? Because one, you, you have them in a in kind of a transparent way. You can see ownership. But what you, you can do is you can actually track the provenance or the ownership of that particular asset. So now take the $100,000 that I put in and give me 100,000 tokens, right, representing my ownership of that real estate. Now, when we've put this on chain, and we'll just call this chain because I don't want to name any sort of chains that we're going to use, but if we just put these tokens on chain, I have these tokens sitting in my wallet, right, and again, this could be like an Ethereum wallet, this could be a, uh, a non, you know, uh, just any non-custodial wallet. This could actually be at a uh, qualified custodian, so they could be holding this for me. Because again, most of the investors in this don't care about the non-custodial aspects. They care about the fact that it's a really good investment, right? So now the the company here, so we'll call it Real Estate Corp, that issued these tokens to me. I put my hundred thousand dollars. They issued these tokens to me. Now they are managing this company, but all this data, you're gonna have all this data going in, informing what the value is of these particular tokens, right? And the data is things like the appraisal of the, uh, the appraisal of the value of the real estate that we're sitting on, it's the income, right? It's the, um, the uh, occupancy, it's the uh, information maybe about the, the city, maybe about the economy. It's the expenses. It's the cap table, right? All these are going, all this data is going into this and because it's all on chain, it's transparent. So anyone who looks at these tokens can see this is what's actually happened. Here's the actual value of the real estate. Here's the income that's come in minus the expenses. Here's the cap table, here's the occupancy. Based on my algorithms, I can decide here's how much the, this particular investment is worth to me, to, to someone else who, who might be the buyer. Now, the, the great part is since everything that, that went into this investment, this LLC, uh, ha, has been denoted in this token, and uh, including the regulatory aspects, who can buy it, who can sell it. Now, if there is a, uh, a, a trading agreement, if, if there's a market that is created to trade these tokens, now I can potentially put these tokens up for sale. So Adam has these tokens, Ron is over here, he looks at this, at this investment, this particular investment, he's been KYC certified, right, he's gotten into this marketplace because of the fact that he's an accredited investor, he's done his KYC, now he sees this list of tokens and he goes, oh, based on all this data, I think these tokens are worth, uh, I think these 100 tokens would be uh, worth, you know, $200,000, I think they're worth double. Now, I can offer mine up. I can say, look, I'm gonna sell 50 of my tokens for $100,000, right? Double my investment because the value of the property's gone up, they've really done well with their income, they fixed up the building, they're, they're making double the rents, whatever it might be, and Ron might come in here and go, look, I'm willing to pay that. Well, now my 50 tokens go to Ron for $100,000. I get 100,000, which was my initial investment. I'm, I, I, it's been made more liquid for me. Ron now has 50 tokens. I now have 50 tokens. The company, this real estate corp, they don't care who owns it because they are just making distribution payments to the token holders, regardless of where the wallet is. So the nice thing for them is that they didn't have to go about valuing it. They didn't have to take their time. They didn't have to repaper. They don't have to know that Ron is the owner instead of me. The provenance has been changed by virtue of the fact that the tokens have moved to a different wallet and money has been exchanged and has probably gone through some sort of exchange, some sort of transfer agent uh, that has been denoted and approved by, in this case, the SEC. So what has happened is We've gone from a time when the tokens, that people were trying to issue security tokens just because it was the cool thing to do, it was the hot, it, it, it was piggybacking on the ICO craze, and now you've gone, okay, we're gonna build some infrastructure. We've built uh, the, these data engines right here to be able to provide this data. We've built oracles 
essentially is what this is. We've built some of these oracles to make sure that these have data that is accurate, because that's what the SEC wants, that's what regulators want, banks, investors, everyone wants accurate data. We've built accurate data. We have built transfer agents that have been approved by the SEC to be able to transfer the ownership and the provenance. That's uh, kind of what's happened. We've understood that this company, because of the fact that they can get accurate data, that there's transfer agents, that this can all happen, now they have actually had to build real companies. And again, it doesn't have to just be real estate. You can do bonds, you can do private companies, you can do hedge funds, whatever you want it to be. There, is, there are so many uh, private assets that can now be denoted on chain. Again, I don't want it to just be real estate. That's just a really easy case, right? Now, if I'm an investor, I feel good about this, right? Because the data is verifiable. I can see what it is. There's a secondary market for it. So I can get out of this illiquidity, and now this is still somewhat liquid. But encoded in this token, right, is the fact that I have a, maybe a 12-month lockup period. It's encoded in the fact that Ron has to be an accredited investor, right? So I don't have to worry about it. Recorp doesn't have to worry about it. The transfer agent or the market is kind of taking care of that to know that Ron is accredited. Therefore, if he's going to buy it from me, I don't have to approve it. I'm outsourcing some of that to them. So this infrastructure has been built. Now, the fact that these tokens can be transferred is, also means that they can be used as collateral. So now I can get a loan against them. This was exciting for us a couple years ago, but the plumbing and the infrastructure wasn't all there. Now it really is. So now the fact that I can use it as collateral and get a loan for it opens it up to DeFi applications, right? Because now I can get a loan. It doesn't necessarily have to be at a bank. It could be in some sort of lending protocol. It could be a lending institution. It could be a union that's created online or, or created on chain of people to invest or, or make loans against tokens like this. And the reason we can use it as collateral is because I can use my 50 or 100 tokens as collateral knowing full well that if I don't pay the, the interest or if I don't make my payments or if I don't pay back the loan, the whatever institution, whatever group, whatever wallet made the loan to me can actually take my tokens from me and the ownership or the provenance has changed. Those tokens can be locked in some sort of smart contract that says if I don't pay, they can take those tokens. Or we can just say if I don't pay, the tokens that Recorp or, or what Recorp pays to my tokens into my wallet go straight through to pay the interest on this note. We can do all that programmatically and that's what's so exciting because it's opening up not only the ability for myself and Ron to get together and, and trade, or for Recorp to find me and for me to have more confidence to invest in a company like that because it opens up more options and more benefits to me. But now you open up a DeFi type space, right? And whether, again, that's, we, we, we look at, we talk about chains. It could be on Ethereum, it could be on Tezos, it could be on Ravencoin. There are so many others that are developing these systems. Uh, Algorand might be one of them. That not only can I denote these security tokens, but now there's a secondary market. So if you're talking about Tezos, there's T0 as a secondary market. There are DeFi applications built on top. If it's Ethereum, you have uh, some like open finance, right, that is a secondary market for security tokens. And then of course you have all the DeFi applications and you can use those, real, those tokens, those security tokens as collateral. That is what's so exciting about this. We will talk this week, not only is, is our real world assets always, they're not always going to be real estate like this. It could be, um, it, we're, we're going to talk about invoices, right? You can, what's called factor invoices. So an invoice can be something that, that gets put on chain and now uh, a company that, look, if they're going to get payment, and, and we'll talk about this in a few days, but if they're going to get payment in 30 days, for this particular invoice, they can sell it to me today for a 5% uh, a discount, right? So if, it's, if they're gonna get paid $100,000 in 30 days, I might say, look, I'll give you $95,000 for that, right? And they'll take it because they need to pay their people, they need, they need to pay some of their costs. They don't wanna wait for that money. They, they're happy to, to take that 5% hit 
to be able to get their money to, to pay their bills, their working capital. Now in 30 days, I'll get $100,000. Well, I've made 5% in only 30 days. That, on an annualized basis, that's a great rate of return. There are people all over the world who have this kind of money that can, that can buy these invoices. Currently in the traditional structure, it's just hard to do. It's hard to match those up. Well, in, in, the, in the blockchain world, it'll be much easier to match those two up. So we'll talk about what some of those protocols are, what some of those companies are that are creating that ability. On top of invoices now, you, you actually have the ability to tokenize the actual goods or the shipment that is part of the, the invoice. So now I have the ability to not only uh, to, to not only factor the invoice and provide funding for it, but now if they don't pay me, I can take ownership of the goods. I can take title of the goods there. Now, now you really have something there because you're taking the entire supply chain, the, sh the, uh, the trade finance world, and putting it on chain and opening up so many more options, services, benefits, service providers out there. So it's really exciting to talk about tokenizing real world assets. We're going to do that quite a bit. We're going to have several uh, podcasts talking about it, several videos, several guests. There are some great uh, products, protocols, applications, blockchains out there that we really want to talk about because it's really exciting because now we're opening up trillions and trillions of dollars worth of assets that can now go on chain. Now we're not only talking about pure cryptocurrency, we're talking about actual assets and actual investments that people can make uh, in real assets, not, not cryptocurrency they don't understand, but investments people are already making, and now we can add benefits, add services, add efficiency, add transparency, immutability, all those great things we like about blockchain. So that's what we're going to talk about. This is why it gets us so excited talking about tokenizing real-world assets. We're going to talk about the different chains, the different data uh, oracles that are out there, uh, some of the companies that are doing the tokenization, what all is entailed in that, uh, what the different regs are between the U.S. and, and the rest of the world and, and where we're seeing that going, what some of the assets are that actually are being tokenized, and we're really excited to discuss it. Uh, we hope you enjoyed this. We hope you'll subscribe to the YouTube channel, especially so you can see what's coming, all of our videos. We hope you'll check out our, our website with our podcasts on Twitter, at Interaxis8, the number 8, so you can see everything we have going on as it comes out and, and really come learn about this. Hit us up if you have any questions, and we look forward to seeing you this week and in the next videos.